Hey, hey, what's going on life agents? Hey, Leon Thomas here. Hey, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you actually what we call uh, the life cycle of a lead. So I'm gonna be covering the details on the life cycle of a lead, right? And so if you are a life insurance agent or you are looking to become a life insurance agent and you wanna know how to work your leads, then this video is for you. If you don't wanna leave money on the table and have aged leads that actually, you know, you waste money on but you never actually get to, uh, because for some reason you're just not writing the policies for them, uh, this video is for you. But before we dive into today's video, uh, if you are looking to get your life insurance license or you are a licensed agent and you wanna make more money, uh, you need fresh, exclusive, consistent leads on a daily basis um, and in real time, uh, you don't wanna be a captive agent, you want higher comp, then you can actually click on the link up somewhere above this video and you can schedule a 100%, 100% free strategy call with myself or someone from our agency and we can actually get on a call with you and strategize on your game plan and see if it's gonna be a good fit for you and how we can actually help you out. So with that being said, of course, let's go ahead and dive right into today's video, right? So uh, the whole purpose of this video that I, I'm doing this video here is because a lot of agents are actually that are joining the life insurance industry, uh, they are misunderstanding exactly, they don't have the understanding of the mindset of the leads uh, that they're buying, if you are buying leads and how to work those leads. And so the whole goal is to literally understand, call it the life cycle of a lead, uh, because a lot of times we're leaving money on the table and it's simply just because we're not understanding our market. And what I'm gonna talk about right now is basically understanding you know, the type of people that we're dealing with and how to actually work your leads. So if you're not, if you're buying leads, but you're not getting the money out of the leads, right? If you're buying leads, but you're not writing policies for these leads, um, this is, I'm gonna explain to you why and how you can actually eliminate that problem. Begin writing more policies on those leads, okay? For the leads that you're purchasing. So there's a few things that we wanna keep in mind uh, when you are buying these leads. It doesn't matter which platform you're using, whether it's Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Google ads, Bing ads, no matter where they're coming from, it's, it's important for you to understand um, what's going on with these leads, right? So let me give you an example. Um, so take yourself as an example, right? Everyone, we're all on the internet today and we fill out forms for all kinds of different things, right? It could be insurance, for example. It could be solar. It could be for to get your gutters you know, clean. It could be for a new roof. It could be for pest control. It could be for something for your kids, right? And we all fill out different forms on the internet. And obviously, if you've been on lo online for a while, which most of us have, you probably start seeing ads about similar things, right? Because you've opted into some ad, you've given them your name, email, phone number, and you know, obviously you're on their email list. And it doesn't mean that you weren't interested. Obviously you had some sort of uh, interest, some level of interest, but you didn't necessarily opt in so you can get the call right away per se. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. In most cases we don't, especially not on social. Uh, but either way, what ends up happening is life, right? So let's just say, for example, um, put these arrows here. Um, so you fill out a form on the internet and you opt in for some reason, right? For any, any you know, it could be anything, right? I already covered the different things we opt in for. And you become a lead, right? But during that time, when you become a lead, right? Um, life happens, <laughs> right? I'm gonna put life here for a reason, right? Life happens. So you become a lead, you fill out a form, you opt in, you know you're gonna get an email, maybe you're gonna get a text, maybe you're gonna get a phone call, but you opt into that form, and no, you, maybe, you, you might not have been expecting a call right away, but you know someone was gonna do something, either like I say, text, email, maybe phone call, or all of them, but life happens. Let's just say maybe, for example, you were at work, and you fill out that form on your break. Well, obviously, you know, you had a 30 minute, maybe to an hour break, for example, and you went back to work, right? And something happened while you're at work, right? Let's just say your boss ticked you off. Maybe you messed up on something. You didn't complete the job that day. You didn't meet your quota or you didn't get that punch list done. And so your boss chewed you out. And so you get off work, right? You get off work and you're ticked off because you're worried about maybe getting fired or losing your job or you know uh, not getting that promotion that you're expecting and guess what happens someone from that company that you opted into they gave you a call you don't really want to talk today <laughs> right and so you're you probably not answer your phone because it's a you know unfamiliar number or you know you just are just ticked off right maybe you hang up you answer the phone then you hang up 
Does that not mean that you're not interested in what you opted in for? No, it's just a bad time, okay? And this can be, this, this is a lot of different scenarios, right? There could be, you could be at home and the mailman was walking up and the dog got out the side gate. Maybe you got a big dog, maybe you got a pit bull, maybe you got a Rottweiler or something. And you know, they're a, it's a vicious dog and you had to run outside to go and make sure that your dog didn't go bite the mailman and your phone rang at the same time. Maybe you picked it up and you said, you know what? Hey, yeah, that was me, but click, bam, I gotta go, right? These are different scenarios that are happening, right? Um, and this is why we even have what we call age leads. And so a lot of times when we're missing out on the opportunities, you're calling that lead. It doesn't necessarily mean no, it just means not right now. It doesn't mean they're not interested anymore. It simply is life and life happens to all of us. So what ends up happening to most agents is they get leads into these areas here where life is still happening. And a lot of times we don't consider ourselves uh, when we're actually dialing our leads, right? And there's all kinds of things going on. Maybe they got relatives in the hospital, you know, maybe a relative, you know, passed away from COVID and they're just down and they're depressed. It does not mean that they're not interested. It just means not now. And so the reason why we even have aged leads is because in most cases, these leads are people that as soon as they opted in, they got just a bunch of phone calls, right? I'm just kind of here people that want to talk to them. They got multiple phone calls in a day or over several days or over a few weeks per se, right? And they just said, you know what? I'm not familiar with that number. And, and they just don't want to talk. They're just not answering their phone because it's, you know, it's an unfamiliar number. While on the other end, you as an agent, you think, oh, well, they're not answering because it's a bad lead. And the biggest mistake that agents make is they prejudge a lead before they even actually talk to the lead whether it be on the phone or they get to the home because they door knocked. And that's the biggest mistake that you can make. I actually made that mistake before in thinking that, you know what? They didn't answer the phone, They're, they don't want it. But guess what? By the time you went to the home, you sold them a policy, why? Because the meanest people on the phone, and you probably heard it, uh, if you haven't heard it tell you, the meanest people on the phone are the nicest in the home. And there's just all kinds of things going on in between the time, like I said, they become a lead and the time you actually even see them, whether it be, you know, or talk to them, whether it be from a phone call or you actually visit them in the home. So just keep this in mind that there are a lot of things going on and, and these leads are no different than you and I, meaning they have life happens, right? You do it, I've done it, we've all done it, we've all opted into, you know, some type of ad, whether it be somewhere on the internet, and yet it doesn't mean that we weren't interested, we were interested, that's why we filled out the form, we just have life happening to us. and so. I just want you to keep in mind that when you buy a bunch of leads, yes, the goal obviously is to dial those leads. You want to get to them as fast as you can for obvious reasons. But also keep in mind that when you're dialing what we call an aged lead, that's an aged lead for a reason. It's simply an aged lead because no one got to it. And in most cases, they didn't get any coverage yet because they had hundreds of people calling them for a, a time period. And all of a sudden now, that time period has passed, whether it be two weeks, three weeks, whatever, and now their phone isn't ringing as much, and then boom, one day you decide to call them and they pick up. That's how you get those huge testimonies, those huge premiums where agents are saying, hey, you know what? These are one month old or two month old or three month, or three month old leads, and they're aged leads. No, they're not shared, they're just aged leads, and guess what? You wrote 2,500 AP in a home, or you wrote you know, three, four policies in a home, and maybe you got a referral. It's because of that. So I hope you guys got a ton of value from this video. Keep in mind, this is exactly the life cycle of a lead. So the life cycle of a lead, number one, is they're gonna become a lead, okay? A percentage of those leads are gonna actually call, they're gonna answer when you call them, okay? If they, um, you know, if they work, they, they may answer that if you work. If they're not, they're home, they're gonna answer, they're more likely gonna answer. If not, they're gonna be home, okay? And then of course, you're gonna have those, what we call those age leads, right? Okay, those age leads that pretty much, you know, they're just waiting for that, those phone call, multiple phone calls per day to die down, right? And then when you call them, maybe a month or so later, they're going to answer. Or if you go by the house, maybe on the weekends, a Saturday or a Sunday, more than likely they're going to be home because they work and those are their days off and the weekends are really the best days to go, okay? So I hope you guys got a ton of value for this video. Just keep in mind, do not prejudge a lead before you actually get on the phone or you get to the home, I would say preferably, and you make that judgment there. 
okay? You want to get in front of that lead. You want to get to that lead's house and you want to talk to them there because more than likely if you get to the house, that's an AIDS lead and no one's actually helped them out. If you're doing your job correctly, then you should write policies for those families, okay? So with that being said, of course, I hope you guys got a ton of value. Once again, like I said, if you guys are looking to get into the life insurance industry or you are in the industry and you're not getting paid what you feel you deserve, you don't have fresh exclusive leads, you don't want to be a captive agent, you want day room renewals, you can actually click on the link above this video, schedule a 100% free strategy session with myself or someone from our team, and we'll hop on a call with you and we can see what options we have and how we can help you out. So with that being said, of course, I hope you guys got a ton of value. You actually leave some comments here. Any questions you may have or comments or observations, just leave them here in the comments and I will personally respond uh, as I see them come in. So with that being said, of course, till next time, I'll see you guys on the internet. Take care.